Hey everybody, I just want to share a brand new resource for you on the studio. This is about using actions for the actor. It's going to be particularly um, relevant to one of the sessions for the month of March. We're recording this in March 2021. We're in the actor's gym this month. We'll be trying out how to use actions as an actor. This is more to go into the, the theory behind it, the, the thinking behind it why you might want to use it, how you use it, all of that good stuff. So let's dive in. So as actors, we have uh, an obligation, right? We have um, this obligation. It's not enough just to show up and play our character and, and hope for the best. Part of our job as actors is to mine the script for evidence, for clues about our character build a bit of a character and, and come up with this thing called an objective. Something that our character wants to achieve in a scene or in the overall script that we're working with. So um, here, this rep my diagram, this represents a very generic looking actor. I mean, they do have problems with facial expressions, this actor, and their headshots it's fair to say, you know, there's not a lot of variety in those headshots, but here is actor right here. This is what this represents. This actor needs to come up with an objective for their character, something that they want to achieve um, in a scene or in a script. So I want to make someone love me or I want to kill somebody is sometimes an objective for, for a character, right? It, it's something like that, yeah? Um, and then, in order to, um, what we're pushing towards with the objective is to achieve, um, or direct the objective towards, is a target. Now I think, American friends of the studio, this is literally, uh, you know, the sign, the logo for the target shop, the target um, outlet that's based in the States. And you know what? It just served a purpose in the circumstance. I needed I needed a target, and I needed the word target. I thought, why not kill two birds with one stone and just, just use the target logo? So if anybody works for Target, as part of the studio, don't sue me. I'm just using it for this, this little diagram here. So we've got the actor, the objective, and they're trying to achieve the objective towards some kind of target, right? And that, that target could be the other actor that's, that's on the stage or whatever. Um, but there is a missing bit in the middle here. There's a missing connection, right? We're, we're not quite just ready to decide on our objective as an actor and automatically direct it towards the target because we still might be a bit general in our acting. Like the objective helps us be very specific as to what we might want to achieve with a character, but there is a missing bridge to uh, get towards the target. We're missing a little bit in between. And what that little bit in between is the is the how. It's the how we're gonna try and achieve that ob objective towards our target as actors, yeah? If we just say, I wanna, I wanna kill somebody, right? Then like, we just go in the scene with a very general idea of, I wanna kill, you know, this person. That, that, that might be the target, right? if you are Macbeth or something. Or if the target is like, I want to um, make the person love me, then we go in with a very general idea of that we want to make that, that person love us, yeah? Um, these are two very basic examples. But if we add this element in of how, how are we going to make that change in the person? How are we going to achieve the objective? within the, the target that we're, we're, we're gearing towards, then we get in a really exciting place as an actor because what it allows us to do is get really super duper specific as to the, the changes we're trying to make in that other person or the target, right? So this is where actions might come in. Like once we decide on the objective, the thing we're, we're trying to achieve, the actions help us anchor how we're going to do that. So if it is, I want to make the person love me, then the how 
might be, well, I want to try and seduce them. I want to try and flirt with them. I want to try and impress them. Like all of these things would be the how of trying to achieve the um, objective towards that target. You take this little bit away, that's when we might get some more generalized acting. This allows you to refine and be very, very specific. And that is the, the base point, the starting point in my justification of why you might want to explore using actions. So what are actions? Well, I, I'm sure you can read, but I'll, I'll go through these bits anyway. It's an acting craft technique to help decide how we are going to go about achieving an objective. You can use actions for a whole scene, but most of the time we use actions line by line or unit by unit. If you don't know what I mean by unit by unit, there is another resource uploaded in the studio right now. Uh, things called uniting and punctuation, text work for the actor. Check that out and, and come back to how you might use it unit by unit. But as we know, just, just as in life, right? The target that we're, we're trying to reach towards, the, the thing that we want in life, is probably always changing for a number of different reasons, right? Therefore, we've got to use a variety of different tactics or actions in order to, to get the thing that we want. It's maybe not enough just to you know, go into the scene with, right, I, wanna, I want the person to love me, I'm gonna seduce them and try to seduce them for the whole scene. It might just be that you seduce them within a line of, of that um, text, because for the whole scene, that, I mean, that would just take a lot of energy in the first place, right? Um, but yeah, I digress. It usually takes the form of a verb, these actions, like a doing word. So I don't want to make this into an English lesson or anything like that, but, um, but yeah, it's very useful to know that actions are usually in the form of doing, doing something yeah, to that, that, to that person. Like um, that we're actively wanting to make a change in that other person or the target. So, for example, to taunt, to strengthen. Yeah, these are things that we can actively do to that other person. And I think it's worth saying at this point, it doesn't just need to be another person. Because if you've got a monologue, well, you're always addressing it to somebody, right? If you've not got another character or another actor on the stage with you, you're still addressing it to someone. You just might have to use your imagination a little bit more as to who you're actually addressing it to. But we're always doing something to a target as, as actors. So let's take an example of how we'd start to apply actions to a script. And in this case, I'm not gonna do it to a unit. I'm gonna show you how you'd apply an action to a line. So this is an extract from Harold Pinter's The, the Lovers. And um, it says, right, stage direction, she wrenches herself away, he traps her in the corner. Sarah hissing. What do you think you're doing? Max, I'm dying for a puff. So yeah, it's quite, quite a creepy little bit of dialogue that, isn't it? Like it's, it's um, yeah, not, not the most ideal scenario, it sounds like for, for Sarah there, right? But Max says this line, I'm dying for a puff. We can assume what he means is he's dying for a puff of a cigarette or, or whatever. And there's many different options for the actor who is playing Max to pick in terms of an action for this line. But like, he might not have an action, he might just say, I'm dying for a puff, yeah? But let's see what happens when we apply an action, or like some kind of doing word, to the line. So what if we added to harass? We gave the actor playing Max the action to harass Sarah, yeah? That he's got her trapped in the corner there, to harass seems to make a lot of a lot of sense, really, doesn't it? It seems to um, align with the scenario that, that Sarah's currently in. Um, so if we told the actor playing the part of Max to harass Sarah on the line, then he'd have to embody the energy of harassing her, yeah? That he could maybe bring it into a physical sense, like, but probably mostly vocally, yeah, um, to try and harass her. Why not give it a try just now? If you were to harass 
um, Sarah, if you were the actor playing Max and you had to harass Sarah, what might that sound like? Great. I mean, I've no idea if you gave that a go. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't, but I'm going to pretend that I heard it. And I'm going to say, that sounded fantastic. Well done. You might go back to, to this one, right? You might try to seduce, yeah? That's going to sound very different to harassing Sarah, isn't it? Um, and maybe give that one a go. Oh, wow. Wow, that was, that was lovely. Very nice. And um, you might, because she's in a, a, a situation of distress at the moment, Sarah, you might be trying to calm her down a little bit. You know, maybe, maybe you want to soften Sarah with, when you say this line, yeah? So try that one now to soften with I'm dying for a puff. Mm. So you've given a go, hopefully, of, of trying out the power of taking a line like this and starting to layer on and add a variety of actions. And um, hopefully, you, see, you know, you're starting to make some discoveries there. To, wow, that really gives a different sense to how I might say those certain lines or how I might try and deliver that to the target, which in this case is, is Sarah, right? Um, so why might you want to use this? Well, hopefully you're starting to feel that. Like, it, first of all, what I've been talking about in this video already, it allows you to be very specific about how you're trying to achieve the objective. If we just take the objective alone of I want the person to love me, we might just give a general wash to that acting. It allows us to anchor and bed down and be super specific as to how we're going to achieve the objective. It helps us make discoveries that we wouldn't otherwise find. Like even just that alone, right? Like if we try to say that line to soften Sarah, we get a really interesting dynamic to the character of Max that we maybe wouldn't otherwise discover on a surface level um, approach to the character. Like maybe he does as part of him, even though he's in this, you know, he's threatening this, this woman from what we can hear. What happens if he's got this gentle side to him? What dynamic does that bring to the character? And it helps us keep in connection with the other actors and the target that we're trying to achieve the objective to. Like, that is the main thing, isn't it? Like, if you drop off being in connection with the overall target that you're trying to achieve the objective to, then, you know, you're not doing your job as an actor. Like, you need to have an objective of some kind when you go into a scene. And you need to be delivering that objective to somebody. And using actions can help us keep on that line constantly throughout the scene. So, yeah, let's uh, take a look at this again. Uh, the line, um, no, let's not take a look at this again. Let's uh, realise that Adam has added an extra slide in by accident and is now trying to cover it up smoothly. This moment never happened. You never saw this. Moving on. Now, you might be, uh, you know, super um, efficient at thinking up various verbs and doing words. And that's great if you can do that. That's, that's fantastic. I'm not. And this resource has been incredibly useful for me to, to um, come up with all sorts of different actions uh, to apply to a script. It's called The Actions, Actions the Actors Thesaurus by Marina Calderone. And... Um, yeah, it's available in both book and app form. I've never downloaded the app, but I was looking at it in preparation for this video and it actually looks very, very useful. Like, um, so yeah, you can check that out. I use it in all sorts of ways, you know? For example, you could, once you get a sense of your character, pick actions that really align and make sense for your character, right? Ones that are gonna, you know, intellectually make sense to, to pick. You know, um, so for a character that is quite um, violent to some towards somebody, you know, uh, to taunt, to mock, all, all those evil sort of verbs might make sense. But sometimes what is very useful is just to pick ones that completely don't make sense at all. Like literally picking up this book and 
turning to a random page and just randomly running your finger down the page and landing on a, a, a verb and then apply it to your, to your script and see what that might look like. Like, and just try it on for size and make some really interesting discoveries that you wouldn't have otherwise. Like, that's something really fun to do. Or um, pick a letter, like a random letter from the alphabet, turn to that page, see what action it lands on and see what discoveries can be made like that. So there's tons of fun, tons of things to unpack uh, using this actions actors thesaurus. I'm not a commission, by the way. I just, I just found it really useful as an actor. This is a little look at the app. What I found was really um, interesting about the app on this one is it looks like you can save actions. So if you're working on a specific character, it looks like you can save a list of actions there and also make some notes as to why that um, action is useful to your character. And then this, this is basically what it looks like in the book, that you, you get a word, a verb, and then it'll give you synonyms, words that are similar to the word, that maybe just helps you refine even further. Like, there's slight differences, isn't it, to when you to praise somebody, to admire, to applaud, to bless. All of these have slight variations if you were to use them as an action. Um, so as you can see there, yeah, just tons and tons of actions you can add at your fingertips. So yeah, I, I did that just sort of randomly with the, the max line. I just opened up the book earlier on at a random page. And then like, I came across this one to educate. So this is an example of how you might use the options of actions to come up with something that maybe doesn't fully align with like the character. Like I'd never think for the character of Max to educate off the top of my head. I, I probably wouldn't think of that, right? This, this, guy that seems to be threatening this this woman. But if I suddenly apply the action to educate, then yeah, again, we get this really interesting dynamic, this interesting layer to the character that we maybe wouldn't otherwise discover. Like if he's trying to educate her and dying for a puff, that becomes quite clinical, quite formal. It, it just adds something there to, to the character. Um, so, you know, I'm not saying that I would make that choice and start using that for the character, but it's certainly interesting when you're exploring to, huh, I'll try that on for size, see how it works. So this is a second level to the actions that I just want to add in. Just got a couple more bits to tell you about actions. What happens if you add an adverb to the adjective? What are you talking about? I mean the verb. <laughs> what happens if you add an adverb to, to the verb, yeah, to the action? So like happily, smoothly, lovingly, angrily, right? All of these things end in lay. If you're not sure, you know, of what an adverb is, just, you know, add, add L-Y to the end of it and you, you can't really go, go wrong. You know, what if we were to happily educate? Um, or what if we were to lovingly educate or angrily educate? All of these have really distinct variations as well. And yeah, you've guessed it, it'll allow us to add even more specificity to the how, how we're trying to achieve our objective as actors, just by adding this slight variation to it of the, of the adverb. Might be useful that, might not be useful, but the more specific you can be, then the more the acting will fly, basically, the more specific you are with your choices. So this is a way to add a layer on that helps us be really specific. Just to end this video, I, I just want to talk about when you should use actions because when I work with actors on this, they're like, cool, I get that, Adam. You apply the actions to every line or every couple of lines. It helps me keep all my objectives. I get all that stuff. But when I'm up there and I'm performing or, or I'm acting, I, I don't want to be thinking about, oh, did I add to persuade or to judge? on that line. Like I want my head to be actually engaged with acting with the other person on the stage or on the set or wherever you are. And my answer to that is you're absolutely right. You don't want to be thinking about actions when you are in performance or when um, you're actually there, pro you know, a little bit in the rehearsal room here and there, but this is more about exploration within preparation, right? This, this is more about 
before you go on to the, the mode of performance, exploring possibilities for your character. And of course you don't need to memorize like a robot all of these different types of actions, but just by exploring them and playing around with them, it's going to start bleeding into your subconscious a little bit when you perform it as an actor. It's incredibly effective in a rehearsal room sometimes when you can't quite find certain moments to start using actions and start applying it. Um, it just helps you keep that razor sharp focus on what you're trying to achieve. But of course, when you go to the final thing and you're performing, you don't want to be thinking about what action did I add to this? You just need to be lost in the moment when it comes to that part and trust that all of the work you did is swimming underneath the surface and just give yourself over to your other actor and the target that you're trying to change. So that has been a bit about actions today. I hope the skill is useful. Uh, I hope you get the chance to try this out in a couple of weeks in our live session in the studio, the Actors Gym, uh, if you're watching this in March 2021. If it's after then, unless you've got a time machine, mate, you, you, you're not going to manage to be part of that session. I, I apologise. But take care, as always. I hugely appreciate your um, involvement in the studio and look forward to sending some more videos, some more resources out in the near future. So thanks very much, everybody, and take care.